open up. You open up. Hit you on baby M. We should be close and friends. All right, guys. So, um, really quick, I wanted to dig into this topic, and I was originally going to title it "How I Married the Wrong Person." Um, but I didn't want it to come across like that. But we have a lot of messages right now in the season, basically sharing um, just about godly unions, kingdom marriages, kind of like what to expect, what not to expect. We don't have people who actually. Um, we do, but not as many messages that actually share the dangers of what happens when you do marry the wrong person or you do marry outside of God's And I am a living testimony. I'm a witness to that. And I kind of just want to, I, I wrote down some notes that I want to share with you guys. But just to get started, I'll kind of share my story. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shaylia. And um, I had my first child at a very young age. Um, I had my son at 16 years old. And I was in high school. And when I graduated from high school, when we got out of high school, me and my son's father, we got married. I was 19 years old when we got married. The way we got married, I'm just gonna be honest, and this is why, why um, you know, they, they say get some without repentance, but even in your sin, Sometimes you, you don't really know who you are, but you have a glimpse of who you are. And so you will respond certain ways or do certain certain things, certain ways, or um, just react certain ways and you really don't understand why, but it's just, it's because it's only a piece of who you are. So imagine when you get all the way into God's will, like, how are you gonna be? But long story short, basically how we got married was, I, I gave this man an ultimatum. I did, I gave him an ultimatum. I had got pregnant with our second child, my oldest daughter, and I said, look, I said, I was not called to be a baby mom. I was like, I'm not gonna be a baby mom. I'm not gonna stay in this relationship and continue to just be with you and be your child's mother. You have one or two options, okay? First option, I said, first option A is you can leave and I'll be a single parent and I'm gonna take care of the children by myself and option B was, well, we can get married and I'll be your wife, okay? Obviously, he chose option B. Now, again, I was wrong. This is not something that um, I tell people now, please don't do this. Don't give people ultimatums because they're not, they may make a decision out of fear and not only will it hurt them in the long run, but it can hurt you in the long run, okay? Now, on the flip side, I did not put a gun to this. It wasn't like I put a gun to his head and made him choose that. So he still had the choice to choose option A, but sometimes we make decisions out of fear. And so I'm going to go deeper into that, okay? So that's how I got married at a really young age, and that was that. So we did it. Okay, fast forward a few years later, by the time we had our third child, things were really crazy, really rocky. Um, we separated separated um i'm just gonna be honest even while we were still married we both end up we were living in separate states so we both end up getting into two so uh, two total separate different relationships um we had children inside of the marriage even though we were not together there was still no legal divorce so when i just say straight chaotic chaos this is exactly what it was and i'm being honest to give you guys the honest truth um, to share, I believe people go through this and they don't share, but I just want to kind of show you guys how not to end up in this situation, especially for those of you who are single and you desire to be married. I just want to show you how not to end up in this situation, okay? So the first thing we said, don't give people ultimatums, okay? Because they can make a decision out of fear. You may think you're doing something good and you're not, okay? Um, but fast forward, so separation, um, we both started new families. Finally, the divorce is final, right? So once that divorce is final, um, the second relationship that I had got into um, is my youngest son's father. And so by this time, I'm a mother of four. Um, my oldest three were from my ex-husband and now with my youngest son's father. My divorce is final. And so again, we've been in this relationship years go by. I mean, it's like four or five years going by. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I said the same thing. But this time, 
The only thing that was different was I did not give an ultimatum. I just left. So I learned from my first mistake and I said, you know what, I'm not gonna give this man an ultimatum. We got a five year old son. We're not married. I, I just knew. I was like, I know. I'm caught at least I thought I did. There's more to it than that, but I was like, I know I'm calling your wife. I'm not meant to be a baby mom. I'm out of here, right? So I left. I walked away from the relationship. What do you guys think happened? He proposed. So, um, now this time I said yes. And I'm not gonna say I said yes in fear. Um, but I said yes more so to the fact that um, I was comfortable with him. I was, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I was just, I was just comfortable with him. I was used to him, and I knew that he was, he was good. I felt, at least I felt like you know he was, he was a good father to my older three kids. He treated them just like his own. But something in me was just saying that he was just not a good man for me. And also vice versa, I was not a good woman for him. Okay, but I'm gonna just make it go both ways because I don't want to, I'm not the type of person to play the victim at all. I know the mistakes that I made and I know the mistakes that they made and God knows exactly what happened, okay? So long story short, I just, I just knew he wasn't the person for me. I felt that way, but I still said yes. So here I am walking around again um, I'm engaged and we have we've told people we've told family members we told friends um, co-workers you name it we're planning this wedding for the following year everybody knows it's, it's all over social media right and I'm just thinking I'm like hey in my mind okay you know I'm not gonna be a single parent but it just things just did not set right with me so fast forward again this was the first time um, I really started getting into a relationship with God and I went on my first fast. So I fasted for 24 hours straight, guys. I'm talking about um, no food, no water, just straight oxygen, I mean, just straight air, straight oxygen. So I fasted and I was like, God, I don't want to make the same mistake that I made the first time. I did not invite you into the marriage. So this time, I want to do it right. And, and this is, I'm just being honest, even me, and I was in sin, fornicating, all that. But I was in a process, and if you guys know, I wrote the book called Respect the Process. I was in this process of transformation and just really getting before God, turning my life over to Christ, just getting before the Lord. And so this is what happened, I'm just being honest. But long story short, 24 hours went by, and I immediately got that, my answer that day, and God was like, if you want this, to be just like your first marriage, then fine. But I'm letting you know now. And God was like, if you marry this man, it's gonna be just like your first marriage. And so even as embarrassing as it was a second time around, you know, getting engaged, thinking I was gonna be married again, um, I had to let it go. I, I gave him the ring back, I called everything off. It was extremely embarrassing, like I said. It's, now I feel like I was made a fool twice on social media, right? just in front of the world let's not even just say social media but in front of the world family friends co-workers you name it okay and so the lesson in this um i'm probably going to be all over the place but i took notes is what what happened and so when you ask me if someone says well shay what happened what what made you choose wrong twice or you know what happened um and this is where god showed me what women do sometimes we choose our conflict versus our calling okay the enemy wants you to choose your conflict but god wants us to choose our calling and what happens in the face of adversity fear is what causes us to choose our conflict and so sometimes as women we're fearful and what do they say fear is false evidence appearing real right and so for me my conflict in my mind was i'm gonna look bad i'm gonna be a single mother of four how can how, how i'm gonna start over you know what i'm saying who's gonna want me now I've already had two failed relationships like it's just too much you know I got two kids father so that was the conflict and that's what caused me to make to choose my conflict to make that wrong decision okay to say yes when I really should have been saying no and so one of the things also God showed me was is whenever you choose your conflict you can only see with your eyes you can only see with your eyes, okay? And I need you guys to understand that fear causes you to only see with your eyes. When you choose your calling, 
you can see with your heart. And this is why God says to guard our hearts because above all else, out of it flows. It's the source of life, okay? So this is very important. Um, so like I said, I had chosen my conflict. Um, and so if you're ever asking, so what, is, what does it look like when you choose your conflict? And I wrote down internally, you're not happy. When you choose your con, how will so you'll say, so how will I know? So let's say you guys have a question, you're dating someone or you're engaged and you're like, is this the person? Is this my conflict or is this my calling? I'm going to tell you how you're going to know this is your conflict. If internally you're not happy, you probably chose your conflict, okay? And if externally you feel like things look good, um, everything looks good on the outside, whether it looks good on paper, it looks good for business, it looks good because you don't look like a single parent, you probably chose your conflict. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy wants you to be tied to your conflict and God wants you to be tied to your conflict. Okay, so I don't care if you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids, all right? If you know that this man is not tied to your calling, don't do it. Don't do it, sis. Don't do it, okay? Also, in that process, like I said, I had a decision to make and this is also a season I went through in the process where God taught me decision making and this is when I learned free will versus God's will and so in that midst God didn't say when I was fasting it was like God is this the man that you have for me he didn't say you better not marry this man that's not what God said he didn't do it the first time either with my ex-husband God said if you marry this man this is what's going to happen and so this is when i learned that we have a free will we have a free will and this is why i'm sharing this video because you can do what you want you can decide to do what you want or you can accept god's will god does not pressure us into anything that's why you have a heaven and that's why you have a hell because you have a choice to do whatever it is you want god doesn't want anybody to get to heaven and we're complaining about the streets are so gold, I can't even see. My eyes hurt, I need shades. God doesn't want anybody complaining about anything, so you have free will, okay, ladies? So I will tell you that, but he, he will tell you, hey, if you do this, this is what's gonna happen, you, but you have a choice. And so decision-making is so important. I posted this, I posted it under a picture um, a few days ago on my Facebook, and I said, you are the artist. Create the canvas that you desire to see. And I got that because in that season, I remember telling myself when God told me, you know, if you do this, this, hey, that's fine. I'm going to still love you. I'm, I'm still going to take care. I'm still going to provide for you. But this is not my best for you. You know, things may go a certain way, but they're not going to go the way that I plan for them to go for you. So God gave me that decision. And in that moment, I remember asking myself, I'll never forget. I want to say it was 2015. I remember saying... Well, I remember telling myself, I don't want to be the what if girl. I don't want to be the what if girl. And the what if girl is the girl who said, what if I would have trusted God? You know, you, 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 mar you marry that person just because you don't want to be embarrassed. You marry them out of your fear, out of your conflict. And you're thinking years on down the road later. And I'm, I'm sitting here like, what if, what if, what if I would have waited on God's all right guys i'm back i apologize um my video cut off it says that i guess i ran out of storage i'm not sure but as i was saying i did not want to be the wedding girl and you do not want to be the wedding girl um you don't want to never ask yourself what if i was waiting on god what if i would have trusted god what if i just would have believed god like just what if what if i would have chose otherwise and i did not want to be her and I thank God that, knowing what I know now today, I thank God that I, I chose God's will for my life. And yes, I am, I am still single. I am a single mother of four, but um, I know what God has promised me. I'm okay with that. I'm confident in that and who I am. And even own it up to the mistakes that I made. And so I just want to share with you guys. Oh, and then even after that. And so just, just to add, after I did trust God, not only did I end up getting my own place. You know, I stopped shacking up. I stopped fornicating. I started guarding my, my eye gates, my ear gates. I graduated. I went to college and graduated. I wrote and published my first book. I work my dream job. I get to do what I love every day. I don't, I don't wake up not happy and frustrated because I have to go somewhere I don't want to. I do what I love every single day.
I, I started multiple businesses. And so, um, even being a single person, God has blessed me. I've never even, I've never experienced the joy that I'm experiencing now in either one of my relationships. Okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that there was nothing good about it. Definitely, especially my children, all of my children, I thank God for them. But I'm just sharing because sometimes as women, we get so caught up in society, we get so caught up in what the TV is showing us, the media, the world, that we lose sight of what it is that God has for us. So, like I said, I'm not going to prolong this. That's really it. I just wanted to share with you guys the importance of a union, the importance of a godly union of marriage and not making the wrong decision just being uh, patient and trusting god and again ladies um, remember not choose your conflict choose your calling all right i love you guys see you later